You guys have no idea how long I've been waiting to talk about this show. It's been on the back burner for ages, but I just want to pull the trigger now because this is something I'm really passionate about. I freaking love Barry in the Big City, the cartoon that's currently representing the fourth generation of Strawberry Shortcake. I've been a fan of it for over a year now. I kept up with season two when new episodes were dropping. I know I've watched season one like eight or nine times by now. In a world where Friendship is Magic has been heralded as the perfect kid show and where people will not shut up about Bluey, you fucking furries, I legit feel like a lot of kids shows have been slept on and this is my prime example. In a lot of ways, I think this show is better than Tell Your Tale, despite how similar they are, which we'll be getting into later. I'm in no way saying Tell Your Tale is bad. I really like it, but it has some glaring issues that this show just so satisfyingly glazes over, like a Krispy Kreme donuts. I've always felt pretty weird comparing Make Your Mark and Tell Your Tale to Friendship is Magic, because despite being the same IP, all of these shows are formatted very differently and are trying to accomplish very different things with how they're written. Comparing Tell Your Tale with Barry in the Big City, though, is much easier. They're both shows aimed at kids nowadays based on 80s girls toy IPs. Tell Your Tale has 5 minute episodes and Barry in the Big City has 4. The differences though? Well, that's a whole other story. A donut hole! For starters, Tell Your Tale is produced by Malaysian animation studio Lil Critter Workshop. Malaysian animation, that, that's fun to say. M Malaysian... Malaysia... But anyways, they made a bunch of shit I've never heard of. Oh, although some of it looks pretty cool. I might check it out. On the other hand, Barry in the Big City is produced by Wild Brain. And if you've been living under a rock, here's a short list of some of the cartoons Wild Brain has made. Johnny Tess, Ninjago, Sonic Prime, the recent Peanuts cartoon, Pound Puppies, the recent Polly Pocket cartoon, Teletubbies, Yo Gabba Gabba, and so much more. Oh yeah, and back when they were using their dead name, DHX, they were the ones responsible for Equestria Girls. Love or hate the shows I just listed, I respect the fuck out of Wild Brain. In fact, I'd call Barry in the Big City the perfect gateway between Equestria Girls and Tell Your Tale. My philosophy goes like this. If you like Friendship is Magic, you might like Equestria Girls. If you like Equestria Girls, you'll probably enjoy Barry in the Big City. If you like Barry in the Big City, you might like Tell Your Tale. If you like Tell Your Tale, you could like Pony Life. And if you like Pony Life, then there's really no hope left for you. The similarities don't just end there though. Barry in the Big City, otherwise known as BBC, is developed by Michael Vogel, who wrote a lot of shit for Friendship is Magic season 6 and onwards. He also worked on Spectacular Spider-Man, so he's basically Jesus to me. The casting in this show is good as fuck too! You wanna know the main reason why I'll defend Izzy's voice to the very end? BBC is why. Anna Sani is fucking perfect as Strawberry. Combined with how her character acts, it makes me really happy to say that my favorite character in Strawberry Shortcake is Strawberry Shortcake. She's able to strike that delicate balance between charming and awkward, similar to Izzy but while being marginally more toned down. It helps that her voice is slightly deeper, which is even more impressive considering she also voices Strawberry's Aunt Praline, who has an even deeper voice. Is that a cricket? Yep. Huh. How did it get past my ultrasonic bug repellent force field? You know, I paid a lot of money to install that thing. Nothing should survive in here. <laughs> Except us. I'd say the main difference compared to Izzy's humor is that Strawberry's has less emphasis on one-liners and scatting and much more emphasis on sounding confused. I'll give her credit, Anna Sani is great at sounding completely caught off guard. Your assignments. Oh, that's not so bad. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> oh, I meant for you to eat that. I'll just, I'll text them. I'll tell them I made a mistake and ruined every berry's, you know, Time. What mixer? Oh, what? Did you say mixer? I don't know what you're talking uh, about. Excuse me, ma'am. I think you just killed my cat yeah, with your electric no, stand no, mixer. I'm pretty sure all these shows just pull from the same Canadian voice acting union because there are tons of familiar folk here. Andrea Libman is the voice of Lemon Meringue, which is funny considering she voiced Lemon in the previous generation, where she just straight up used a variation of her Pinkie Pie voice. Hi, Barrick and Bloom. It's my entry in the talent contest. That big, beautiful hedge at the lawn, bowling, and croquet club. I'm gonna finish it today. I can't speak for this show's quality. She sounds totally different here, though, in no small part thanks to Lemon's radically different personality. I know, it's Sweetie Pie's day, and you won't want to talk feelings and stuff, but since I don't want to, I thought I'd show you how much you mean to me instead. Bahia Watson, the voice of Misty, also voices Orange here, and I really like the performance. It's pretty much the same pitch as Misty, but with the confidence and enthusiasm turned up to 11. You need energy? You ask this berry. You, me, tomorrow morning. It's gonna be epic! Do I have a choice? Tabitha St. Germain voices Raspberry Tort, and the best way I can describe her voice is if Diamond Tiara's soul was trapped inside of Rarity's body. 
I know you were worried since you won't be here for my birthday, but my friends are taking care of everything. It's gonna be fantastic. Oh, this is raspberry. Raspberry tart. Call me when you get this, bye. Vincent Thong is voicing Huckleberry Pie and Man, it really does feel like all the characters this guy voices share one brain cell. There's not much shipping in this show, but man, he's like if Flash Sentry got a lobotomy. Her sign said, hot pies, only eat when cool. Strawberry likes my music, she thinks I'm cool. So she leaves those pies out for me. That's not what the sign means, is it? No not even a way. little. Wow. I stole the pies, didn't I? Uh -huh. Yeah, totally. Just wow. There are tons more examples, but this really goes to show how intertwined these shows are production-wise. In fact, while I'm on the topic of characters, let me just say this show has a colorful cast. And no, I'm not just talking about the bright, fruity aesthetic that would make a hyperglycemic chest explode. No, I mean racially. This has to be the most progressive kids show I've ever seen. Like, Jesus Christ, tell me you voted for Biden without telling me you voted for Biden. I mean, it makes sense. The setting is Big Apple City, which is a parody of NYC, a melting pot. I guess the thing I'm most impressed with is how casually it's all treated. Like, yeah, they made blueberry Asian, plum pudding a black guy, and lime and huck two different flavors of brown, but that shit just doesn't matter at all. To me, that's how shows should handle being progressive, not expressly advocating or constantly preaching a message, but just destigmatizing these topics by not making a big deal out of them. And my respect is like three times greater for how it handles LGBT stuff. Oh my God, gay people, they exist and nobody gives a shit. <laughs> like lime has two dads, cool. This dude, bread pudding, straight up metrosexual hipster, and I'm here for it. I'm pretty sure this version of Lemon is aromantic. Oh fuck, trans people exist too? Yeah, this show actually had the balls to put that little factoid out there. You only got inklings of this kind of stuff in Friendship is Magic. I think it was a bit better in EQG. I, I remember there being some kind of gender non-conforming character in an episode. Cool socks. I'll be damned if Tell Your Tale is ever gonna attempt anything on this level though. That show plays it safer than a life jacket. And I mean, that's kind of fair. MLP and politics have always gone together like ammonia and bleach, but still, Strawberry gets the point for this one. Race aside, I really like the character designs in this show. Okay, let me rephrase that. I really like the main character designs in this show. For background characters, a lot of the time, they'll just race swap an already existing one. It worked for ponies, but it's pretty distracting at first seeing the same people wandering through this whole ass metropolis all the time. Also, some of these background character designs are just, God no, what am I looking at? Kill it with fire, please. But uh, the, the main character ones are appealing. <laughs> you can pretty much tell what all of them are about by a glance, but there's still so much more to them beyond that. By my standards, they are entirely three-dimensional, which is majorly appreciated. Also, this is my chance to say fuck you to Barry's Bitty Adventures, you fucking atrocity. In the 2003 show, the character designs were pretty decent, especially in season four when they were aged up and they looked really fucking cool. But here, nah, shit. They should have called it Strawberry Shortcake Copy Paste Adventures. Look at what you did to my homegirl orange the fuck i think it's safe to say that this is objectively the best strawberry shortcake cartoon ever which i realize isn't saying much but you know what i mean in, in my opinion this is doing the same thing that friendship is magic did for mlp specifically in terms of writing a lot of these episodes are written really fucking well so far there haven't been any tug at your heartstrings episodes or ones that deal with super serious topics that'll make you go wow this is a kid show oh my god no, they're mostly just funny. There's an excellent balance between what's being said, the way the lines are delivered, and the comedic timing that just makes the moments hit, you know? Hey, Strawberry, do you have any? Oh, no. Shh, 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 shh. Listen. Living? It's okay, Orange. Most artists don't get the respect they deserve until they're dead. And last but not least, smile, be yourself, speak from the heart, and you'll be perfect. You get all that? Uh... Oh yeah, this show also does berryisms in the same way that modern MLP does ponyisms. Saying words like every berry, flantastic, oh my gumdrops, stuff like that. I've honestly grown completely numb to it. If you can handle every pony, but you can't handle every berry, I'm gonna call you a goddamn hypocrite. I also just love the stories, and this is probably my biggest criticism with Tell Your Tale. The story outlines in it aren't bad by any means, but I always feel like they're kind of rushing through them. To me, Tell Your Tale episodes need to be like double the length to actually be close to reaching their full potential. Otherwise, they can feel a little half-baked. <laughs> 
They usually have inorganic exposition, a rushed rising action, a super chaotic climax, an okay falling action, and a good resolution with an obvious moral. Also, a lot of jokes just aren't as funny as they could be, probably because they require more setup and or more pause for emphasis. I don't know why this is the case, both with Tell Your Tale and Make Your Mark, but the editing on the voices is legitimately bad sometimes. Often, characters will talk immediately after each other, even after saying a punchline. To my knowledge, that really only works with dry humor, otherwise it really fucks with the comedic timing. With Barry in the Big City though, these have been total non-issues. Most of these stories just feel so perfect when confined to four minutes. They're mostly those kinds of plots that involve being presented with an issue and then going beat by beat, or sometimes character by character, trying to come to some kind of resolution, be it a learning experience or a solution to a problem. I usually dislike those kinds of episodes because I think the structure is too predictable to be stretched into a 20 minute time frame. But again, that's a non-issue here. I never feel like my time is being wasted. When they don't follow that plot structure though, they're still really good. Oftentimes, they feature an antagonist that lasts for the entire season. Oh my god, Raspberry Tort is basically just a better Diamond Tiara. They have episodes dedicated to letting Strawberry sympathize with her instead of just having her be a straight up mean girl bitch berry all the time. And guess what? They actually keep her around to develop her character even after she settles her differences with her rival. Fucking Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon wish. It's worth mentioning that this show also uses mockumentary style cutaways like The Office and Modern Family. If you don't like those, then not gonna lie, I think you might find the show pretty annoying, but I think they're really useful for quickly and naturally giving exposition, changing scenes instantly, and emphasizing certain jokes. was a mistake. I should have. I'll also give BBC credit for not constantly blasting background music. Like, it's there, don't get me wrong, but it's much less loud and much more subtle than it is in Tell Your Tale. And I like the Tell Your Tale background music, but it's not exactly situational. It has too steady of a BPM, and like I said, it's way too loud. And if I've learned anything in my time editing, it's that music is usually a distraction for weak writing. Same principle as like audience laughter in sitcoms. However, if I was to criticize something about this show, it would be the music. Akin to all the other FIM similarities, this show has Daniel Ingram doing all of the main vocal tracks, and they mostly range anywhere from good to okay, mostly okay. I remember really liking the theme song, the Ordinary Berry song, the Frightfall song, and especially the Purple Pie Man song. Everything you've ever wanted, make your dreams come true. Oh, everything you've ever wanted, make your cake and eat it too. Lots of songs are just annoyingly catchy too, like Huck's first song or Lime's really flowing fancy, go big, go up, I'm mostly lukewarm about the other songs though. They're not exactly memorable to me, but I also think that might just be because I'm not a big fan of Daniel Ingram's more traditional stuff. I think the best I've heard from him were the solo songs in the latter half of Equestria Girls. But then again, I also think that G5 just has the best music out of all of these shows. I fucking love the Make Your Mark and Tell Your Tale albums, but the songs are so short in the actual episodes and they're usually not integrated that well, to be honest. Most of them don't really have a few bars that play at the beginning before the vocals kick in, so a character will just be speaking and then all of a sudden start going, you can call me evil, but the music integration in Strawberry Shortcake is objectively better. That much is true, but I'm not a big fan of the musical episodes. If you're just binging the show on Netflix, then you might be caught off guard by how many songs you're hearing so close to each other. But you gotta remember that these four minute episodes were released on a weekly basis. So the frequency of the music does make sense on paper, that said, it's a little disappointing when I'm all geared up to watch a new episode, I'm ready to enjoy whatever the writers have been cooking, and then all of a sudden I'm Ingram and the episode's like 75% music. Sometimes though, a musical episode will actually be the first half of a two-part story, which makes sense. Yeah, I have to wait a little longer, but that just makes the story bigger. Also, this show has two-parters! Why Tell Your Tale has not had any two-part episodes yet is beyond me. It would be the easiest solution to the episodes feeling too underbaked. It's stuff like this that makes me happy to know that we're getting those full length Tell Your Tale specials, purely because this has far and away been the thing that's prevented me from fully enjoying the show. Oh yeah, speaking of which, Barry in the Big City is going to be getting a special later on for Halloween, and it looks okay. Honestly, the trailer didn't exactly sell me, and I don't know how I feel about the 3D. This was actually the plan for rebooting the show back in 2017. You can see they plan to have the same cast of characters, but it seems they wanted to do the same thing the 80s and 2010s cartoons did, making everyone super microscopic and living in a kind of fantasy garden setting. So, the date is October 2nd. I, I just woke up, and I, I thought the Strawberry Shortcake special was gonna come out later this month, but it came out today. 
but I'm happy to report that I was completely wrong. Beast of Berry Bog is just as great as the rest of the show. I don't know why they showed the clips that they did, but it definitely didn't do the special justice. Uh, it takes place in between seasons two and three, so just watch seasons one and two before then. Uh, uh, that's really about it. I'm gonna go continue editing this shit. Ugh, God, it's fucking early. If it wasn't obvious by now, I didn't grow up on Strawberry Shortcake. I was too busy watching shows for men, like Dragon Tales and The Wiggles. I don't really have any sort of nostalgic yearning for it to be like the 2003 show, but like, you won't be hearing me complaining at all. Barry in the Big City is a great modern kids cartoon. Appealing characters, witty writing, not talking down to the audience. Shit, if you let your kids watch this, the rest of their childhood is gonna be awful, cause this show sets the bar way too fucking high. I could probably make another criticism about Tell Your Tale, but honestly, Honestly, I was just using it as an excuse to finally talk about this show. Go watch that too though, I still think it's good. That said, if you want to hear me talk about the show that I think is like make your mark but basically better, or if you have any recommendations for things you'd like to hear me talk about in the future, let me know in the comments. If I'm a Latina character now, can I still say the n-word or is that not okay? Special shoutouts to my patrons, Uncle Graf, Space Cat, Lil Mighty, Sylve, Justin Surface, Confounding Outlier, Isaiah Badala, Malachi Beetle, Silver Blaze, Wumbo Kodat, Hey It's Jay, Just a Raccoon, and Tapeface YT. I'm sorry this one took so long. If you don't know down, come back up, up, up. You know that I got you even when it's tough. If you don't know down, come back up, up, up. Never on your own, cause you got us. If you don't know down, come back up, up, up. You know that I got you even when it's tough. If you don't know down, come back up, up, up. Never on your own, cause you got us.